Welcome back, everyone. One of the most uh, important community forums uh, one could imagine, certainly a timely one, is coming up a week from Wednesday at UT Scott Park campus. It's a community forum on child sexual abuse. I'm going to be the moderator for that, but the people instrumental in organizing this event are here today. Cece Norwood, consultant, author of the book, There Is Happiness After Incest and Child Sexual Abuse. Wow. And uh, Sandy Nugent from the Family and Child Abuse Prevention Center joining us to talk about this uh, really critical forum uh, coming up a week from Wednesday. Thanks to both of you for being here. We appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, first, tell us uh, how this forum came about. Uh, is it in relation and response to the Sandusky mm -hmm. situation? We have uh, cases here, but, but Cece, why don't you start? How'd this forum come to be? Well, you know, it, it came about because the, the local coalition, the Sexual Abuse Path Coalition, is all about working toward eradicating all forms of sexual violence in Northwest Ohio. And we just sort of jumped on the opportunity to bring this forward uh, following the Penn State and the Syracuse, because it's also public, lots mm -hmm. of conversation back and forth about, you know, what's that all about and, you know, those kind of things. And so the, uh, the coalition decided that we wanted to hold a community forum, local, so that our community could be aware of what are we doing here in Lucas County? You know, what is the system for working with families who have had children that have been sexually abused? You know, what can they expect? What are the service providers who uh, are, are here to address that for, you know, families and individuals? And then we wanted people to, to know exactly what the system is from the first responding police officer at the scene all the way through the prosecution of the case. Well, and how, uh, we talk about prevalence, how mm -hmm. prevalent mm -hmm. uh, Sandy Nugent mm -hmm. is child sexual abuse uh, in our community? Mm -hmm. Uh, in 2011, we had about 580 reported cases of child sexual abuse. It's, it's staggering mm -hmm. to me. It's estimated that there are about 39 million survivors of child sexual abuse in our country. And we know that maybe a third of the folks who are sexually abused never disclose and never get help mm. and I think when we consider wow. the the results of sexual abuse and how it really can devastate not only a child's life mm. who's a victim but also our society as a whole we really need to move forward and see what else mm -hmm. we can do in our community mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. so that also I think is part of it is to, to maybe encourage uh, folks in our community by attending this forum, understanding what we can do as professionals, but also what steps can they take as far mm -hmm. as prevention mm -hmm. goes. Uh, and and, and mm -hmm. Cece, you, you wrote a book called mm -hmm. There Is Happiness After Incest and mm -hmm. Child Sexual Abuse. Yes. How'd that come to be? Well, it came to be because I'm a survivor of uh, child sexual abuse and, and incest. And, you know, finally after many years of kind of getting myself back together and starting uh, a support group, if you will, for women who are survivors, interviewing a lot of women, um, I decided and that I needed to write something to let people know that being a survivor of incest and child sexual abuse is not a, a death sentence, that it is possible to be happy after having those experiences. It is possible to have good relationships and, and good family and, and those kind of things because it seems in our society at least that once that happens to someone, it becomes a very um, depressing thing and, and I don't know, hope is lost. And so what I write about in There is Happiness After Incest and Child Sexual Abuse are what are some things over the long haul that survivors can do to help them get through you know, these experiences. Sandy, we had a recent case where a man was convicted of, of uh, sex crimes against young boys, teenagers, and uh, one of those victims came forward. He had, uh, he had married mm -hmm. uh, and was struggling. Uh, mm -hmm. struggling with it in his marriage and, and finally and he told us this uh, that he just uh, during an argument just blurted out that so-and-so raped me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that yeah. and from that point uh, prosecution took place mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the burden was lifted off him mm -hmm. yes. um, I mean you mm -hmm. see you see victims mm -hmm. firsthand I mean tell us about the process mm -hmm. when somebody uh, is is pointed in the direction of the child abuse prevention center well, we um, always make our referrals to Children's Services, Lucas County Children's Services, whenever anyone suspects any sort of child abuse, including child sexual abuse. But at our Children's Advocacy Center, which is housed in Family and Child Abuse Prevention Center, we 
there we have an opportunity to do forensic interviews with children's services, with um, law enforcement, the detectives come there. We have a wonderful doctor, Dr. Randall Schliefert, uh, that comes and does any sorts of physical exam that needs to be done for the family. It's a very child-centered um, place to come, very supportive. We have crisis counseling there. We have non-offending caregiver support. So we can help the non-offending caregivers know how can, how can they help their children mm -hmm. through what could be a difficult situation. Mm -hmm. And if handled correctly, if children don't have to repeat their story over and over and over mm -hmm. again, it cuts down on the trauma that the children experience and they, and they do heal. Mm -hmm. And so our hope is that people will be able to disclose sooner yeah. and be able to get help earlier. Is there a pattern on just how long before mm -hmm. someone actually does come forward? It's just very, it can be years, months, decades, I mean, <laughs> All no. the above. Right, yeah. it, depends on, the above. it depends on the individual. Yeah. And, and, mm -hmm. and the environment in which they're living, mm -hmm. you know, and, and the support because what you're doing is you're having to overcome the shame that many, many survivors feel from it even though it wasn't their fault. You're having to overcome the stigma of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and when it happens to men, it's even um, sometimes greater because now the whole masculinity, you know, issue uh, comes into play, you know, as well. And so it can take a lot of years and uh, for some people. And during that time period, um, sometimes people do things they ought not do you know, as a way of trying to survive, you know, from it or to deal with the emotional trauma from it because it's, it's a trauma that they've experienced. Uh, moving forward, the, mm -hmm. the Penn State case, uh, a judge will make a decision this week possibly on whether or not to mm -hmm. throw out the case. Mm -hmm. uh, Jerry Sandusky's uh, attorneys want the case thrown out. Of course. Uh, we'll see what happens in court with sure. as that situation develops. Mm -hmm. In some way, mm -hmm. the, the tragedy that is the, the Jerry Sandusky Penn State University case, mm -hmm. um, in some way, you hope that it makes people more aware of what's mm -hmm. going on, right? And is that oh, part yeah. the reason that this forum in, indeed is coming up? Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. You know, whether, however that case turns out is, is really the way it turns out. Right. But it definitely has given it, uh, the, the nation, you know, let alone locally, yeah. an opportunity to talk about the sexual abuse of children so that if we start the conversation, then we can also talk about how to end it because there is absolutely no reason why we have sexual abuse of children you know, in our society and that it, it does involve mm. a cultural change, a norm change where it becomes just unacceptable. And, and as a result of that unacceptability, then that would allow for victims of abuse to feel they can come forward and talk about it because they know something to be yeah. done. And with that, we want to invite uh, the public to come yes. to come and, and take in this forum. Yes. There's a week from Wednesday. Here it is, uh, the yes. 18th, 6.30 to 9, University of Toledo Scott Park campus. Yes. Sandy will be there, Cece will be there, and yes. a host of other people who yes. are instrumental in this fight and yes. helping victims. Yes. Uh, so yes. we hope that uh, you can join us. I'll moderate that event, and, uh, mm -hmm. and thanks to both of you, you. Uh, for coming in. Uh, perhaps mm -hmm. nothing more important than, than this issue. Thank you. Know. Happy Easter. Thank you. you. Thank you, Sam. All right, we're going to come back in just a minute. Uh, we're going to talk a little politics. Watch your word from the Sojourner's Truth when we come back on Take Three. Mm -hmm.